Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm setting up our March 15th paycheck budget. Now March is paycheck. I already know off the bat we have a lot of obligations and a lot of expenses and going into this I wasn't so sure we were going to be able to meet them all. Some of them have had to be postponed until April's paycheck, but we'll get there in a bit. For those of you new to my channel, we are a rural living family of five living off one income, which is paid out monthly on or around the 15th of each month. And we use that to pay down our debts and reach our savings goals. In February, we paid off our city credit card and we have moved on to K Chase. It is our last credit card that holds a balance. After this, it's the loan for our Explorer and then our student loans and finally the house. We are down to the last little bits. However, these are some very big balances. Since we are paid monthly, I budget or I make a best estimate on our income and our expenses, but it does get very hard to predict every single expense throughout the course of an entire month. This part was much easier when we were paid weekly. The workbook I'm using, you can find a version of in my Etsy shop or in my shop at makingsensematter.com and I'll leave a link to both of those below. Before I start writing out any of the bills, I set up our budget calendar. Since our paycheck doesn't fall on the first of the month, I need a place to see everything that this paycheck needs to cover over the course of March and April, as well as any expenses that we may have coming from our sinking funds. For this paycheck, I know it's medical expenses and our real estate taxes. There may be more, but right now I know it's medical and real estate taxes. Also, yes, I see that I wrote electric twice there. The 22nd really should say Explorer and I fix that later. And then at the bottom, I really don't have any reminders for this paycheck month, but next paycheck month, I will need to start tracking our pool expenses. We live in PA and we really can't open our pool for actual swimming until about Memorial Day. But even then, we need the solar cover on it to keep it warm. And in order to get it ready for Memorial Day, we need to vacuum it, shock it, so on and so forth. We do still have some shock on hand from last year, but not a lot. And I just like to know how much we are spending over the course of each summer. That way we can get an idea what to save for next year. Now on to our paycheck. Before I get into this, I want to say to those of you who are new to my channel and budget with me, I underestimate our income and I overestimate our bills. This information will come in handy later. So this month, Hubs is actually getting a raise in salary. I don't know what this will mean for our actual take home yet, so I'm just going to estimate the normal 5,800 for the month. This raise is nothing out of the ordinary. Every year they get a 3% raise with this company. It's basically to cover the cost of living. I'm also leaving a space in our income section for any monies that I bring in from our medical sinking fund or from our non-monthly sinking fund. I do not rely on these as part of our normal monthly income. I simply move them over all at once at the end of our pay month. The reason for that is I used to do it after every transaction. So if I had a $15 copay at the doctor's office, I would pay it. I would move the money out of savings when I got back to the car. The same thing with paying for prescriptions or paying for medical bills online. Our credit union switched it so that we can only withdraw from our savings accounts six times in a calendar month, no more than six. Our checking account is different obviously. We can deposit in our savings accounts as many times as we want, but we can only withdraw it six times within a calendar month. And so to make sure I'm staying within that, we do have a buffer in our checking account and I transfer the money over all at the end of the month when I review our paycheck budget. So for sinking funds, on top of our usual sinking fund categories, I have a few new ones that I need to start saving for this month. Instrument cleaning is for A's trumpet. It gets a proper cleaning once a year after the school concert band season has ended and before marching band activities pick up. I also want to start saving for their back to school sinking fund. So between all of these, it's a total of $1,059. 
Next, I'm going to write out our bills that need to be paid from this paycheck. So I'm writing in the usual monthly amounts and I'm estimating K-Chase to be $770. That's combining the $150 monthly that was going out towards this card and $620 that we were snowballing with our city card. Then I'm going to go through our variable expenses like food, household, miscellaneous, and I'm looking at what we've spent up until the point I set up this budget with our previous paycheck budget. So I set up this paycheck budget on, I think it was March 9th. I don't remember the exact date. It was before our paycheck hit, but it was also a very busy week. So I'm looking at our February paycheck budget to see how we've done in these categories up until that point and estimating what we would be spending in March. I left food and household the same, 750 and 160. I reduced pet to $80 because we had a very large Chewy auto ship. 360 is not what I usually spend at Chewy for our eight week auto ships, but I added in her food, which is very expensive since she's allergic to grains. And I also got her a, a new leash and a few other items that we've needed to replace for her for some time now, and we just haven't done it. Fuel, I also reduced to 150 based on our usage up until that point in our February paycheck budget. Now again, when I set this up, I was not anticipating some referral appointments that will not be in our immediate, as in like a 90 minute drive radius from my house. This may have to change. I may be pulling from some other categories once we determine where the referral takes place. This specific referral that my son got, there are no um, professionals in the area in this expertise. And so I'm going to have to drive at least two hours one way, if they can even find one in this city for me. If not, it's, it, we're, we're looking at the whole state then. Therapy, I have also had to increase this month. Now I have not talked about what all we go to therapy for and maybe I will go in depth with that at a later video. I'm not quite comfortable with that yet, but I will say for now that anxiety and depression run in my family on my side. And in order for me to help my kids cope with their anxieties, I need to be able to better cope with mine. I did not learn good coping skills as a kid. And then we add into this that our middle falls on the higher functioning end of the autism spectrum. There are a lot of nuances going on in our family currently and quarantine aside, like this is where my family thrives. We are very much introverts. This has nothing, quarantine has nothing to do with anything going on, but it's just, there's a lot of things that are coming out now. And these are things that we need, that need to be kept on top of. This is why my family always comes first before my YouTube channel, before my blog, my family comes first. And again, this is probably not the best strategy for me because I can't continually take care of everyone if I'm not taking care of myself first. However, it is my current strategy. I am going to therapy for this as well. Back to the budget though. There are two other categories that I've added in this month. One of them is car and one of them is wisdom teeth. For my car, I need to get my oil changed. And I have an error with my front camera that keeps kicking back. It's saying that there's a malfunction and a service is required. I'm hoping that I can keep this to under $100 for the time being. The oil change definitely needs done. That is absolutely going to be under 100, probably even under 50, but the camera if that's going to put me over a hundred dollars, they can at least diagnose it and give me an estimate. And this will allow me some more time to save up for it. And then wisdom teeth. A needs to have his wisdom teeth removed sometime in June. I've discussed this in my previous video, but I think that our out of pocket cost will be about 670. I will have a better estimate from the oral surgeon as we get closer to June and actually schedule the appointment, but I would rather start saving for it now than wait until the last minute. And the dental category in here is actually for Hubs's filling that happened at the end of February. I'm waiting on the insurance portion and then I'll pay the remaining portion out of pocket. This doesn't come from our dental sinking fund because it will come from the overages that we've had from the last two paycheck months. 
So as I'm estimating what each of these expenses will be for the month, I see that I won't have enough. And this is where I need to start getting creative. I've reduced K-Chase by 170. That's the amount I was going to save for the wisdom teeth this month anyways. And I've decided to not start our back to school sinking fund this month. I will do that next month. And I've also reduced pet down to 60 for this month. In the end, I end up with a negative $5 estimate. Now I want to make something very clear here. If you are starting out budgeting, I do not, I absolutely do not suggest that this is where you leave your budget. I do suggest that you reduce it even further. Yes, even by those $5, get it to zero. I did not. But this is because I've overestimated our expenses and I underestimate our income. I've already seen our electric bill and our insurance bill prior to setting this up and I knew that this negative $5 estimate was going to be fine. I budgeted $150 for our electric bill. It is what I budget every month across the board and that's because our summers with the air conditioner and the pool filter running, it is $150. But this month, because we're still using the wood stove for heat, we haven't started the pool filter, everything is still frozen. We don't even have air conditioners in because everything is still frozen. This month, our, but our bill is just under $103. That's about a $47 difference in just one bill, giving us enough of a wiggle room that a negative $5 estimate is fine. But again, if you are just starting to budget and you do not know your budget and your bills this well, please do not do this method. You need to know your bills and your spending habits and those trends a little bit better before you reach this point. You will reach this point where you're able to know your finances in and out and can do this. Trust me, you will. But if you are just starting out, don't do this. Anyways, after getting my budget as close to zero as I am comfortable with, I do go back and set some goals and challenges for this paycheck month. I want to stay above zero. Now, some months, this isn't hard to do. It's really not, and it's not a goal that I would even think of. But this month, there are expenses lining up that don't normally happen. And add to that the usual categories that come up I just want us to stay out of the red. I'm hoping that my kids don't come home with like random science projects that they need to do or random books I need to buy for drama. My oldest has already told me I need to buy an AP US history study guide. So that's a whole nother story. But with everything that normally comes up just over the course of a month that I can't really predict for when I set up the paycheck, I'm hoping that we can just keep it at zero and just keep it balanced. I also want to make a monthly meal plan again and only eat out two times or less. Since it is March, we shouldn't be having as many snowstorms and squalls as we did in February, putting a kibosh on all our plans, but we have had six plus inches of snow in the middle of April, so who knows what March will hold for us. Part of my monthly meal plan, this paycheck, is to just make a snack pack that I can keep in the car for when the kids are on the go with me, especially when we're out for these longer appointments. This means they can just have something to kind of hold them over for a little bit until we can make it home. You know, it's just, it's enough food to kind of hold the hangry away because hangry kids are not fun when you're confined in a car and you're driving long periods to places. I add at the bottom that next month I do need to start our back to school sinking fund because I did not start it this month. And then I also need to start saving up for a phone replacement for A. He has an LG phone that has been overheating and we've used straight talk for A and I over the years and we buy our phones pre-used off eBay. But with his overheating, we know that its lifespan is, is pretty much done. So we need to start researching phones, their costs, and saving up for a replacement for him by the time marching band season starts this fall. That is going to be in August. Now, one thing that I did not add to this budget with me at all, but it is budgeting related, is that we are calling around to get roof estimates. 
During one of the snowstorms this year, we had about two feet of snow followed by inches of rain and it created an ice dam on our roof and we have some damage as a result. We've already researched going through the insurance company. It's not really an option as there was already some roof damage we knew about previously. It's just, we thought we had more time. We weren't really predicting an ice dam on our roof. Nothing is leaking in. It's just, it's starting its final stages, I guess is how you want to say it. There's warping underneath in our attic that we can see. Um, but there's nothing coming in yet, but we need to get it done this summer. If we don't want a bigger bill later, it is something we need to start getting done this summer. We knew when we bought this house that the roof was like pre-2005. Um, it's not the original roof to the house. The house was built in the 1970s. It was replaced probably sometime in the 1990s. So we knew when we bought the house, the roof would be replaced. Again, we just thought we had a little bit longer of time, we weren't really expecting ice dams on our roof. But since we are getting estimates, and I don't know what route we're going to take just yet, but I will keep you updated on all of that as we get more information. I'm hoping that with our gigantic buffer and savings now that we can actually pay for this with cash and not have to take out a HELOC because we are so close. We have big balances, but we are like down to the last five debts. And I just, I don't want to add another one to that. So that's it for this budget with me. I hope everyone is healthy. I hope you all are well, and I hope to see you next time. If you liked this video, please click that like button. If you want to see more budget with me's, I really want to start doing more plan with me's again. I enjoy filming them, but if you want to see more of my videos, please click that subscribe button. And until next time, bye.